Welcome to the advisory group's fourth quarter economic review and 2023 outlook workshop. Thank you for attending this webinar. Let's first start with some introductions. My name is Danny Chen Che and I am a wealth advisor here with the advisory group. Also joining me is Brent Beverly, the president of the advisory group. Both of us are certified financial planner practitioners, CFPs. At our firm, we partner with clients and believe that an educated client is our best client. So while we will always try our best to help you when it comes to your finances, we believe that knowledge is power. Now, one of our missions is to share with clients any knowledge that may help them make an informed decision. After a healthy year for investors in 2021, on January 2nd of 2022, which was the first trading day of the year, and as the headline shows, equity markets hit new all-time highs. While almost all analysts call for that trend to continue, sadly, after that, the year was turbulent and very painful for investors. Seasoned investors understand that equities are long-term investments and market declines are part of the investment experience, the same way that occasional traffic jams are part of the driving experience. Now, as unwelcomed as it was, we all agree 2022 was a year of disappointment. Perhaps the best part of 2022 for investors was that it ended. Now, let's briefly recap some of the events from 2022 and then turn our focus over to 2023. So why was 2022 so challenging? Well, let's look back at some of the major contributors to this turbulent market. First of all, high inflation, rising interest rates, slowing economic growth, the weakening of fiscal and monetary stimulus after being pumped up for COVID, and additionally, continued global concerns, especially the Russian-Ukraine war, but also fears over Taiwan and China. The world also faced continued health concerns involving COVID and other diseases. All of these factors reflected in the continued volatility and uncertainty in equity markets all around the world. As we stated earlier, after enjoying the longest bull market in history, from after the financial crisis in 2009 to the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, the bear finally rose from its slumber and dominated Wall Street. In fact, 2022 was the worst year since 2008 for all of the three major indexes. And when we're feeling morbid, we ask questions such as, when are you glad to be down 8.8%? And the answer is, when everyone else is down double digits. So 2022 was a roller coaster of a ride that included several ups and downs, but equity markets overall experienced a consistent downward trend. Even a strong fourth quarter, where the S&P 500 was up over 7% and Dow Jones Industrial Average was up over 15% in that quarter, could not bail out the rough year-end results. A broad-based S&P 500 finished the year down 19.4%. As we closed out what was undoubtedly a very rough year for equity markets, investors were emotionally preparing for another potentially mercurial year. Now, not everything is doom and gloom. On a positive front, the Fed's efforts in raising interest rates to slow down the rate of inflation have finally begun to show quantifiable results. The U.S. annual inflation rate experienced a slowing down in November and was at 7.1% for the 12-month trailing period. This is two percentage points down from the June high of 9.1%. So while progress is being made to reduce the rate of inflation, Americans continue to feel the pinch of inflation. Expenses increased across the board in 2022, ranging from housing, gas, transportation, food, and everything in between. In our chart here on your screen, we are comparing 2022's inflation of costs in these areas with the average inflation over the past 10 years. And in each area, you can see a significant jump in costs in 2022.
Let's now move our focus to interest rates. In 2022, Americans saw seven federal interest rate increases, ending the historically low interest rates that were enjoyed since the Great Recession of 2007, 8, and early 09. Now, in their efforts to get closer to their 2% inflation rate objective, the Fed raised interest rates twice in the fourth quarter of 2022. In November, rates increased 0.75% for a target range of 3.75 to 4%. Not surprisingly, the Fed again raised rates at a December meeting. However, because inflation began to slow down in the months prior, the Fed raised it by only 50 basis points, or said another way, half a percent, to a target rate range of 4.25 to 4.5 percent. Now, this marked a four and a quarter percent total rate increase in 2022, which was the fastest upward cycle in history. Now, it's anticipated that the federal funds rate will continue to rise in 2023. The Fed is watching key economic indicators, including the unemployment rate, personal consumption and expenditures, and the consumer price index. So until they see substantially more evidence to give confidence inflation is on a sustained downward path, the Fed will continue its fight to quell inflation. The Fed made their first rate hike of 2023 on February 1st, just a few weeks ago. But they only raised the rate one quarter of a percent. Now, we expect that they will continue to raise rates at that reduced quarter of a percent at least one more time, but more likely two or three times. And we will keep a vigilant eye on the federal interest rate movements and inflation. As you may know, bonds and interest rates move in opposite directions. Now, when interest rates rise, existing bond prices tend to fall. And conversely, when interest rates decline, existing bond prices tend to rise. In 2022, as we noted, interest rates were increasing quickly, so bond prices were falling. Now, bonds are many times considered to be more stable than equities for an investor. However, there's no doubt that bonds had a terrible year in 2022. The 30-year U.S. Treasury bond saw its worst return in a century at down 35%. Now, for those with 10-year U.S. Treasury bonds, the return was down 10.7% in 2022. Those are the kind of downturns we may expect from equity investments in down markets. But as we noted, this kind of volatility is very rare for bond markets. Keep in mind that what goes up may come down. If interest rates reverse and start to drop, we may expect bond prices to begin to rise. Another item to keep in mind is that you only experience the market price change if you sell your bond. If you're able to hold on to your bond to maturity, the redeemed bond will pay off at its par value. Let's take a look at this change in interest rates over the year. As of December 30th of 2022, five-year treasury notes yielded 3.99%. That's up from 0.36%. 10-year notes yielded 3.88%, almost three times what they were paying at the beginning of the year. And 20-year notes yielded 4.14%, and 30-year notes reached 3.97%. The one-year treasury rate reached 4.73% on December 30th after a fourth quarter high of 4.8% on November 7th. Now, many experts suspect that since we now have an inverted yield curve, what is an inverted yield curve? Short-term rates are higher long-term rates that this is indicative of a recession. However, if one and how severe a recession should occur in 2023 is all still speculation. Our goal as your financial professional is to not try to predict the future, but provide you with a solid financial plan that is designed to best weather any market environment. If you'd like to explore how bonds may fit into your retirement income strategy, please contact us so that we may help you make the best decision for your portfolio. Now that we have looked at both the equity and the bond markets, it's interesting to note that in 2022 was a historically difficult year for diversified portfolios. As the chart here on your screen shows, a common diversification strategy of 60% stocks and 40% bond indexes often helps to offset the downside of an investment. As shown here, 2022 was a unique experience for markets since 1970. 2022 was the only year in that 52-year period when both the stock indexes and the bond indexes were down in the same year. Now, often when we see downturns such as what we saw in 2022, investors ask, why don't I just put everything in the bank and be safe? Safety comes with a cost. 
Have you seen what interest rates banks are currently offering to savers? It's still pretty, pretty embarrassing, really. Now, according to Barron's, the average bank money market rates on December 26th of 2022 were 0.25%, and the average 12-month CD rate was just 1.35%. So while still higher than a year ago, these are pretty slim returns, and they leave your principal way in behind inflation. So as we enter 2023, we stand by our mantra of proceed with caution. You've heard this from us before. Multiple factors remain key players in the direction of equity markets, most particularly the continuation of rising interest rates and speculation of if, how long, and how deep of a recession the U.S. and the global economy could see in 2023 and beyond. Global unrest, including the continuation of Russian-Ukraine war and the slower-than-desired reopening of China after their zero-COVID policy was lifted, also factor into uncertainty in 2023. As your financial professional, we are committed to keeping you apprised of any changes in activity that could directly affect you and your unique situation. Hopefully, you're receiving our regular communications, keeping you up to date with our rapidly changing world. Now, we recommend that you not panic into fear in this market. In our opinion, the most important concept of investing continues to be to stay calm and keep a long-term perspective. And the advisory group is here to help you do just that. So what do we think investors should be looking for in 2023? Expect more interest rate hikes. The cost of borrowing has increased, so we suggest that you proactively pay off all non-essential high-interest bearing debt and maintain liquidity for short-term purchases. Review all of your income-producing investments, and as uncertainty remains in the system, remember that a well-balanced portfolio should be designed to have resilience in times of volatility. And finally, don't get greedy and don't get fearful. This is an ideal time to practice patience and to remain focused on your personal long-term goals. Talk of a possible recession remains front and center. Now, many analysts fear the Fed's interest rate hikes to fight inflation at the expense of economic growth is driving the U.S. into an inevitable recession. However, the Federal Open Market Committee projected economic growth of half a percent in 2023. Albeit small, it is still growth. Now, the analysts we follow are all over the board on this. Most seem to be calling for a mild recession, but there are those who say we are past any recession, and others who say we have only just begun. Now, while we can all try to foresee the future, no one can predict the length or the severity of any recession. However, while past performance is not a guarantee of current or future results, history shows us that equity returns after a recession have been fruitful. The lesson here is do not try to time markets. As a recap, here are some things to remember. Now, the current bear market could look like it would be continuing. Just remember that bear markets are part of the investing experience. How long this bear market will last is yet to be seen. Remember from our chart above four months ago at the end of September is so far the low point of this downturn. Interest rates are still on the rise. Refocusing and revamping your budget now could provide direction and clarity on where your money is going, what is necessary expense, and what is discretionary in this new year. Having a solid investment strategy is an integral part of a well-devised, holistic financial plan. We help clients create a well-crafted plan customized for their unique situation and goals that take into consideration how each client will react to the ups and downs. We consider many variables, including your time horizon, tax implications, liquidity needs, risk tolerance, and overall personal objective. Caution could, should still be the principal notion for investors. Again, we feel the best strategy is to stay the course and focus on long-term investing strategies. And as always, we are here for you. As stewards of your wealth, we are here to help you pursue your goals. If you'd like to revisit your financial plan or discuss any concerns or ideas, please call our office or bring them up at your next scheduled meeting. Now, to cover the next section of our discussion, allow me to bring up Brent Beverly. Brent?
Well, thank you, Manny. Now let's talk about proactive tax planning. We feel it's important to remember that proactive tax planning should always be a key focus when reviewing your financial situation. We believe that a proactive approach to looking at your tax situation can lead to better results than a reactive approach. Now, tax laws always seem to be changing. Recent legislation, such as the SECURE 2.0 Act, made significant changes that could affect your 2023 taxes and beyond. So one of our goals is to point out as many tax savings opportunities and strategies as possible for our clients. Now, we'll review some of the broad tax issues and some potential tax reduction ideas here. So please remember that all these ideas may not be appropriate for your, purpose, for your personal situation. This is for informational purposes only, and we always recommend that you address any tax strategy with your tax professional. So let's look at some of these helpful tax planning strategies, starting with some of the changed numbers for 2023. The IRS has released the 2023 tax brackets and here they are. Now there are still seven federal income tax brackets which have been slightly adjusted from 2022. Notice also the standard deductions at the bottom. These have increased. A couple of years ago, Congress increased these figures significantly so that most taxpayers no longer itemize on their taxes. This simplifies the calculations for many people. And we're going to discuss some ways today to use this in just a few minutes. Long-term capital gains are still currently scheduled at favorable rates for 2023. So by holding an investment asset for at least 12 months, any gains are taxed at these lower tax rates, long-term capital gains. Retirement planning for those who can contribute seems to also be helpful. In fact, it's never too early in the year to start contributing to your retirement plan. So here are the current 2023 retirement contribution plan limits. Now, if you have any questions about your retirement plan, please give us a call. You might want to examine taking advantage of the annual exclusion for gifts. For 2023, the maximum amount of the gift tax exemption has increased to $17,000 per person per person. So for example, you can give up to that amount to a family member without having to pay a gift tax. Now the reason I say per person per person, let's say it's a married couple giving to one person. Well, each person can give $17,000. Each of the married couple can give that $17,000 to one person for a total of $34,000 in a year. Now, some ideas for using this annual gifting can include, well, contributing to a working child or grandchild's IRA. Now, for many young folks who are just getting started, helping them contribute to a Roth IRA can be a great long-term strategy. All that decades of tax-free growth can be work of wonders. Another way to do it is it for a younger child is maybe gifting to a 529 plan, which is a tax sheltered plan for college expenses. Now, I love this name, the Enhancing American Retirement Now Act. I don't know who comes up with these things, the EARN Act, more commonly referred to as Secure 2.0, was voted into law as 2022 closed right there at the end of December. So it's one of the largest bills to ever address the retirement crisis in America. This act was designed to help boost the retirement system, making saving for retirement more accessible to a wider range of Americans. Now, most of the Secure 2.0 Act changes will start in 2023 this year, but many of them start in later years. So we're learning how best to help clients under the new rules. So let's briefly review some key changes that'll begin in 2023. Back in 2019, the first SECURE Act changed the required minimum distribution age, the RMD age, from age 70 and a half to age 72. The SECURE 2.0 Act, the one that just passed, pushes that up even further to age 73. Now this new change starts with your 2023 taxes. 
with distributions now required to begin by April 1st of the year after you reach age 73. In other words, that first year you can double up by delaying it one more year and then doubling up that following year. Now, the new legislation also sets the RMD age to age 75, starting in the year 2032. So way down the road here, it goes to 75. But for now, work on age 73. Now, the penalty for failing to take an RMD will be reduced from 50% reduced from down to 25%. Or if you can convince them that it was done and corrected in a timely manner, it'll go down to 10%. Now this rule started at the beginning of 2023. So nice, nice change, that 50% penalty for making a mistake, pretty hefty. 25% is not small, but hey, at least it's better. Now also starting in 2023, you'll be able to add Roth contributions if you have a SEP or a simple plan, okay, a simplified employee pension, a SEP IRA. You can now do Roths. Previously, only deductible contributions to these plans were allowed. So as this becomes available through the custodians, because the plans need to be changed to allow this, we'll be sharing more details with our clients. In addition to some catch-up contribution allowances, Another nice feature of the Secure 2.0 Act will be the option to convert leftover 529 plan funds into a Roth IRA for the plan beneficiary. This feature will begin next year. It's not available this year. It'll begin next year in 2024. The qualifications for this are a bit complicated, including that the 529 plan must have been in existence for at least 15 years or longer. Under this provision, any unused 529 plan assets can be rolled over to a Roth IRA for that 529 beneficiary, subject to the annual Roth contribution limits and an aggregate lifetime limit of $35,000. This rollover will be treated as a contribution towards that person's annual Roth IRA contribution limit, which for 2023 is $6,500. Now, there's still a lot of questions on how this provision is actually going to work. Uh, we've looked at it and come up with a whole bunch of questions. This strategy is something we can discuss for those who, for whom it might be appropriate after all the specifics become finalized. So if this is a situation that might apply to you, please reach out to us, and we're, we're still trying to get the final information on how this is going to work. A critical area to review in tax planning for our, our retirement accounts is what we refer to as an overall family tax bracket management. I love this phrase. If you have retirement assets that are not in a Roth IRA, when and who takes the distributions can make a huge financial difference from a tax perspective. Simply put, if you are in a higher tax bracket than your beneficiaries, then it might make sense to let them take the distributions in their tax bracket rather than you take them in your tax bracket. However, if the beneficiaries are in a higher tax bracket than you are, then it might make more sense for you to take the distributions now in your bracket, convert those accounts to Roth IRAs or other things, and then leave them in an account which still must be taken out within 10 years after your death, but which can grow tax-free for your lifetime and up to 10 years after. A key step that we like to start with to help clients look at tax minimization is to compare your marginal tax bracket with your beneficiary's marginal tax bracket each year. And this is something we try to think about for our clients, especially those with large retirement accounts, how to save taxes. We've discussed in earlier webinars how the 2019 SECURE Act imposed that 10-year retirement plan distribution rule for most beneficiaries. In other words, when most beneficiaries receive a retirement or a pension or an IRA as an inheritance, they have to take those funds out and pay taxes on those funds within 10 years. Now, I'm not going to go through all those rules today, but especially now with the SECURE Act's 10-year rule, for some people, exploring a Roth conversion 
can be very helpful. Now, some benefits of that Roth IRA conversion include, hey, it lowers your overall taxable income long-term. Roth IRAs enjoy tax-free compounding. Roth IRAs have no RMDs at, now at age 73, later to be at age 75. And Roth IRAs allow tax-free withdrawals for the beneficiaries. Now, partial or full Roth conversions are not for everybody. Whether you convert part or all of your traditional IRA to a Roth IRA depends on your situation, your family situation. So before doing so, it's best to prepare a tax projection and calculate the appropriate amount to convert. As with many financial decisions, there are several pros and cons to making this change. Please talk with us or talk with your tax advisor to see if this makes sense for you. Now remember a few minutes ago, we discussed an increased standard deduction. For those of us who are close to or over the standard deduction limit, a strategy to consider is bunching your charitable donations into a donor advised fund. A DAF is what we've, we've got our own initials, right? DAF, donor advised fund. For example, someone who is slightly over the standard deduction each year can bunch say three years of charitable contributions into a donor advised fund in year one, this could bring that taxpayer a much bigger overall tax savings over in this example, three years. Then from their donor advised fund, they can give their favorite charity money each year. The charity sees the same benefits, but you might get a much bigger tax deduction. So now's the time to explore it, this strategy, if it's helpful for your tax situation, to deposit cash, even better, appreciated securities or other assets to your donor advised fund and then distribute the money to charities over time. For more information on this strategy, contact us or your tax advisor. With charity in mind here, people who are age 70 and a half and older may elect to use their IRAs to fund up to $100,000 per year directly to a charity and avoid taxation on that amount. This is called a Qualified Charitable Distribution, a QCD. Now this provision allows retirement savers to directly distribute, again, up to that $100,000 per year to eligible charities straight from their retirement accounts after age 70 and a half and not pay tax on this distribution. Now notice that age 70 and a half, that's different than the required minimum distribution age, which is now age 73. And one of the ideas that experts suggest is that if you are charitably inclined to consider using part or all of your required minimum distribution, that RMD, if you're over age 73 for that qualified charitable distribution, the QCD. How's that for a bunch of initials? Use your, Q, or use your RMD to pay your QCD. Okay, we love it. Like many other strategies we're discussing today, this is one you'll wanna see us about if you're interested in evaluating your situation was whether it will work for you. Now, starting in 2023, these same people are able to use part of their QCD to make a one-time gift, once in a lifetime, one-time gift up to $50,000, and that amount is being adjusted annually for inflation, to a charitable remainder trust a charitable remainder unit trust, annuity trust, or even a charitable gift annuity. Now, this is an expansion of the type of charity or charities which can receive a portion of your QCD. And this amount will count towards your annual RMD if that's applicable. And please note, for gifts to count, they must come directly from your IRA by the end of the calendar year and go directly to the charity. Now, QCDs cannot be made to all charities. Please ask us or talk to a qualified tax professional before implementing this strategy so we make sure you've chosen uh, the right charity to use. Now, these are just a few highlights of the things we think you should know about out of Secure Act 2.0. Believe me, there's a lot more provisions in the Secure 2.0 Act that we're not covering in this discussion. So look for additional information to come via our newsletters and other presentations that may come up. 
Now, we always have important disclosures that need to be made, so please pause your session, make sure you read these, understand what they're, what they're telling us. I want to thank you for attending. We appreciate the opportunity to assist with your financial needs. Now, for us and our clients, your health and well-being is always our first priority. Clients come first at our firm. With that said, if you have any questions or want to look at any of the things that we have here, by all means, give us a call. Here's how to contact us. Give us a call, send us an email. Thank you for attending. For everyone who's here, please have a wonderful day, a wonderful and safe and healthy 2023. Thank you very much.